because this session is about what can the Glamwicky coordinators of the European chapters, or indeed any chapters across the Wikiverse, do to help facilitate pan-European or Glamwicky collaboration in their own country, sharing best practices, but ideally across the continent. Over the last five years, Glamwicky has grown from being a couple of interested people uh, who want to talk to individual institutions to an increasingly semi-professionalized or professionalized uh, networks based in uh, at the co country level or the region level. And that's not to say that um, so you have to be employed to do Glamwicky by your chapter, but that I've long held that Glamwicky is something that requires long-term relationships. As, as Miley was saying yesterday, the speed of Wikimedia and the speed of GLAMS are quite different. And it is just no longer, in 2015, it is no longer acceptable that individual random volunteer can walk up to individual extremely significant national culture <coughs> institution and say, hi, I'm from Wikipedia, let's do things. And then six months later, they go into military service, or they go to university, or they go on student exchange to another country or something. Um, we actually now have three to five year long relationships with some cultural institutions that require a level of coordination and care beyond just, I'm a Wikipedia and I like your stuff. Um, that's where we all started, and that's great, but we're now starting to collaborate cross-culturally, cross-nationally. Uh, Thank you. Um, so, on that basis, as the Europeana Glamwiki coordinator, I um, facilitated a meeting in Paris a couple of, uh, a month or so ago, where 15 Wikimedia chapters of Europe came together sending their official Glamwiki coordinator. Sometimes that was a full-time employee, sometimes that was a part-time employee, sometimes that was a, vol a volunteer board member of the chapter, sometimes that was just the, just the most active Wikimedian in the national organization uh, who had been given tasked with being responsible for looking after those relationships on behalf of the association. So we could learn about best practices, what are the cool things you're doing that I could do, what are the failures that your association has had that I didn't know about and will learn from. So some of those people are here in the room if you could raise your hands. Representing? You start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm representing Austria. Yeah, I'm Finland. And your, and your name oh, yes. as well. Oh, <laughs> really uh, yes. My name is Fettel. Well, Susanna Ones, Finland. Axel from Wikimedia Sweden. Alex from Wikicall. Marta, Wikimedia Poland. And me as Europeana, kind of, not from Australia, but maybe, <laughs> not, and Italy. Uh, and as you can see, we had a, not every country in Europe, and that's fine, but I think really excitingly, the first time that we've had a level of continental-wide coordination, that there actually are 15 people across the country, continent, who have some degree of formal responsibility for maintaining those relationships that we've built over the last few years and continuing <coughs> uh, It's really significant in dealing with these, with cultural institutions. That, who do you call when you want to ring Wikipedia? Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> so now, at least for the first time, and I think value in itself, the, just the minimum standard value is now we, 15, know who to call if you want to ring Austria. Uh, about GLAM, for example. And I, it's amazing that it's taken us till 50, 2015 to, to get that far, um, but exciting. I can talk through the kinds of outcomes we had from this weekend uh, in Paris, but I would, and equally I can pass the floor to any of those who were, would like to say something, if you would. But as much or even more importantly, I would like if other people who have come to this session to ask us questions about 
what you think we can, could or should do in this space in the next year, two years? Alex. Um, so we're actually in the process of forming something like this yes. in the US. Uh, we have a, you, yeah. Not from behind the pole. Um, so uh, in my, my job time, I'm doing Wikipedia library, but in my volunteer time, I, I've been actively involved in the education program and GLAM stuff in the US and recently got pulled into an advisory board for what's called the US GLAM Consortium. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what it's going to look like um, because we don't have the chapters kind of thing going. Our communities are so disparate and where we have communities is not always where we have GLAMs. So we're, we're trying to look for a more GLAM to GLAM relationship um, or at least some type of facilitation network for like if you want to learn how to do something like this. So, so I'm wondering like, what type of resources or what type of communication or what type of centralization is going to be coming out of this because on our end we, we feel very responsible for like, building library resource guides or resource guides for museums because we know we don't have the volunteer mass or even the primary contacts in some areas to, to solve some of the problems that we're So that's my general question. Mm -hmm. Well, the interesting difference on that is how the the history of Glam Wiki and the history of Wikimedia chapters has been inter in interrelated, and how that has caused the culture of Glam Wiki and the culture of chapters in Europe to be different from the progress in the USA. Um, both have been active in cultural partnerships for the same amount of time. But because of the different multilingual, multinational Wikimedia Foundation in, in San Francisco, has caused the diversification, I think, of, of those two things. And the Glam Wiki and chapters are intimately associated. For many chapters, I um, hazard to say, I think the Glam has been the raison d'etre or the catalyzing force for many European chapters. Um, in a different way to the US. Um, yeah, well, and, and I'm just thinking, like, you guys have so much experience, perhaps documenting it and helping Ooh. some of us where we don't have chapters or we don't have these centralized professional uh, roles and, and really getting into the process, things that we could help GLAMs stand up without the Wikipedia in the room. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's so. Uh, I'll let you guys talk about it. <laughs> it's it's hide behind the chair. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, something that, that there's a chair up here that well, died yeah. is that uh, in the US uh, you had Glam Out, you know, a monthly hangout where, where people in Glam uh, discuss with each other. We only had two or three um, global Glam Outs. Uh, what, what I would love to see is, is an expansion of the, the people from the uh, uh, from the different chapters uh, to 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 document the things that are going on. We have the newsletter this month in Glam um, to have presentations based on this month in Glam, where people just talk about 10 to 15 minutes about what they have done uh, during a Glam out. So you have the video, you have the the, the links to the information, you have the newsletter. Um, courses are being developed everywhere. You know, we did the Wikidata course here in the Netherlands has been um, done in other countries too. Uh, the the Glen Wiki workshop went to Finland, I think. So there is some basic course documentation, but it's not there yet for other Glens. So I really think that this group of people is in the right position to at least uh, point out what topics should be uh, covered by uh, by courses and trainings and stuff like that. But I have a session on that tomorrow. So, um, and I really love what's going on in other programs like education. You have the Wikipedia ambassadors. Why don't we have an ambassadors program within Glam, and that every country also have those as. Uh, uh, has those uh, ambassadors. You know, at the Rijks Museum, we have two ambassadors. Uh, there are multiple GLAMs within the Netherlands that love to work with us, that are ambassadors, and would be knowing who those ambassadors are would make it much more easy to connect museum to museum, GLAM to GLAM. Um, you know, if, if not all the museums have the skill of the Rijks Museum, 
most of the museums that contact us are much smaller and they want to have somebody to, to talk to of the same size and maybe the same the same problems that they are they they are going through and that are not funded like the Rijks Museum that have different kinds of funding. So um, I, in, in answer to one of the, the points you made, not all, but yeah. one of the things that we did come up from that from that weekend was a list of tools that we all individually find <coughs> important to know about. Yep. Uh, interestingly, none of us was felt competent or confident in all of the tools that we collectively decided were mm -hmm. the things that we individually need to have. So that was a bit of a, a kind of a short list of the things that, that we voted were really you know, necessary to do our jobs. <coughs> and not everyone knew about them. No one had a complete coverage. So Is some there a reason that Glam Wiki is not on that list? Because uh, yeah. it gets a whole Category so itself. <laughs> oh, that yeah, was a whole yeah, session yeah, that's on that right. Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah. So this suggestion was, hey, those people who do know about those things, put their name oh, against sorry. it and run some kind of virtual workshops and increase the training understanding within this group and wider. Put it on Google Hangouts. Yeah, there's the second one. Do that kind of, of thing. But demonstration. Uh, I think a fantastic demonstration of the fact that the. The level of knowledge of knowledge sharing amongst a cohort of a community of practice is so diverse that it, we didn't even all know about the tool's existence that the country next door decided was crucial to their job, which is the same job. Right. Well, um. Kind of following on from that, um, I suppose I would be nominally we would be the glam person for Ireland and yeah. um, with the user group that we have. Uh, <laughs> but we've, we've only been around for it since January, well, as a user group since January. Um, and the one thing that, knowing what each other of you know, but also from our point of view, we're trying to make the case, because Ireland is probably about 10 to 15 years behind, so we're probably talking around 2000 and we're thinking. The Wikipedia isn't even 15 years old yet, so. Yeah, exactly, so for cultural institutions in Ireland, Wikipedia is not, a, not, not something they really are thinking about much um, on a management level. So from the point of view, from my point of view, knowing not only that you guys know all these different tool sets, but also that there are case studies that I can then use. When we were talking about documentation, because I use the UK stuff quite a bit, which does have a certain amount of traction, but obviously you, in other countries they're going to be doing a lot, you know, there might be case studies that are a lot more usable within an Irish context that I just don't know about, or I haven't been able to find, or are not perhaps available in, in English easily, which would make my job a lot easier. Two responses to that, I think. One is uh, there are many national and regional associations of comedians who didn't know about this. Um, that was kind of deliberate. It wasn't an open call for everyone on the basis of these people were invited because they have some kind of formal responsibility for their GLAM project, not we would like to start some GLAM projects, what should we do? a minimum entry point then. There are projects like this conference for Let's Learn. Um, and secondly, one of the key things on that list is the uh, cultural partners mailing list. I would suggest um, that if you, anyone at this conference who is not on that mailing list or who does not know about that mailing list, or to subscribe to it on the basis that it is, in my opinion at least, the highest signal to noise ratio of any Wikimedia mailing list because it's closed access and you actually have to say why you want to join it. Uh, it's, a it's the Good Land Wiki mailing list and there are no trolls. <laughs> because you actually have to say, I would like to join this because I would like to learn more about Glam Wiki. Uh, you just subscribe and then throw in, some, throw in a, a bomb every now and again. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm, I'm like most yeah. Wikimedia mailing lists. From the Irish perspective, I'm kind of coming from the other side in that I, I worked in the industry. Excellent. And have come out of it and been there attempting to so reformed reformed exactly so i have the personal <laughs> links with people excellent so ireland is a little bit further along in that we have the kind of the, when we were talking about there was a lobbying session earlier we have the lobbying ability but you know i was a member of the irish museums association i've been on several committees that's not really the issue it's more the i mean if you look at the ireland's presence in europeana it is from a cult from a cultural institution point of view it's painfully low and it's so in some ways, I'm quite well connected in other ways, but it's just 
there doesn't seem to have been the penetration when it comes to the tools. None of us have all of the yeah. the thing. Sometimes there's great local community really active and the, and the museums hate us, or vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did any one of the people, other people who introduced themselves like to contribute so I'm not the only one speaking on behalf of our group? I don't know what to say because I am probably <laughs> one of the um, uh, sort of freshest glam coordinators in that group. So for me, it was it was still uh, a learning experience to listen to what you guys had to offer and to I use probably about two of the say metrics tools at the moment because my job I just sort of finished the first six months of the dedicated GLEN program in Poland. So it was uh, exciting because, well, you had to build this GLEN structure from the ground up. There was no wiki project, there was no uh, one single page on the wiki to gather all of the, that stuff and so on. And it worked. And actually I am at a point now where, you know, I wanted to make it a little bit fashionable with the grand institutions because they were afraid to get into uh, open content and so on. And now that there is uh, a dedicated person to do that, I get phone calls. Uh, hello, this is museum such and such. So we you would call like to, to call <laughs> Exactly. Which is, which is a good thing because they, they, they know there is someone who can try and co cooperate with them and tell them what's possible uh, of the time frames. Uh, I usually tell institutions that it's all scalable. You can start really small. You don't have to do what the, say, British Library is doing. It can be a very small or long-term project and, and uh, there are lots of different possibilities and it seems to be working. But uh, from my perspective, this month in Glam, it's nice to read, but it's not really an exchange tool. So I was thinking, all right, now that this wiki project is working, the Polish wiki community know what's going on, so I should probably now try to replicate at least some of that on, I don't know, the outreach page or somewhere, where actually I can share this, what's going on in my country with you guys. Sharing across, taking your successful projects from your country and trying to sell them to be picked up in other countries was the purpose of session four, the pitch, mm -hmm. if you put that on the screen. Um, the final day, the final section of our um, event was called the pitch, where we each proposed what maybe the others would like to do as well, or here's something that I have not yet done but really want to do and will lead if you follow me. I'd recommend, if you're interested, to read through these pitches mm -hmm in your own time. Uh, the link is obviously to this documentation is on Meta and it's uh, from the project, um, from the program. But there are some very interesting national projects that can be replicated and proposed continental based ones. I'm particularly interested in the one from proposed by the community of France, for example, on European royal residencies. The royal palaces of Europe have an association of their own. Uh, maybe we could do some kind of continent wide Wiki takes day where we go into all of those institutions uh, in our local communities. Zika. I'm often confused because I, uh, the observations, I cannot make a whole picture of it. I have the observation that there are so many talented people, but the outcome is not necessarily what I would expect. And when I think of the software producers who are making those tools, very witty and uh, also impressive tools. Uh, I was told that software de developers like to make software and code, but they are very bad in documenting it later, and making manuals, and make it easy for others to use it. And well, I can imagine that if you are someone who likes to produce code, you are not so into text. And all the programmers are complaining about that themselves. <laughs> so you might need people who are different people and who would help with that. And a similar thing I see with the GLAM became aware of it uh, last year was the German Historians Conference and uh, it was similar, a lot of different subject topics and uh, people were mostly presenting themselves. It was a showcase of what they were doing. That's similar in GLAM, you have to promote yourself, uh, how good you are, 
uh, your organization, how great is the content, and so on and so on. But why do we have to do it? It's your funding. You must explain to people why they should fund you. And um, maybe also this kind of people who are into GLAM also maybe they have a different approach to teaching and training and so on. So I could imagine, imagine we would once have a whole week of people interested in GLAM or in software tools used for GLAM and so on and we wouldn't have like 20 topics on the program but like two or three and try to have real results results with which we can later go to MetaWiki and have a thorough presentation of do you want to become a Wikipedia in residence? Well, this is all you need because if you go now to MetaWiki what you find is not really helping and I could go on with those examples. So maybe teamwork is nice, but you must have a good composition of the team with different talent people and have a much more clearer uh, idea of what I want to get the result. A weekend like this is great to meet people, to get inspiration and ideas, but I'm afraid, uh, I see at my, my uh, session yesterday, that's good, that's social and other, other advantages, but it's not delivering results I would be happy with to give to other people and say you can go on with that. It's a train. I'd like to hear from Asaf based on that. I, I overheard um, yesterday how your results are from the history of funding events in Wikimedia Land. This event, by the way, received, didn't apply for or receive any grant. Everyone funded themselves to go from their own chapter's budget, um, which is important for its um, low Overhead, but there's no scholarships and blah blah blah. Meaning that of it. This is sorry, that of it. Um, but I understand from your experience in Wikimedia grant making that focused topics uh, with specific outcomes are more valuable from a reporting point of view than what we have more traditionally done in Wikimedia of trying to bring everyone in the room and have a more broad agenda? Yeah, um, I'm Asaf, I'm from the Wikimedia Foundation. <laughs> Hi, I'm Asaf from the Wikimedia Foundation. <laughs> so some of you have yeah, already reused what I released under a free license last night. Um, so that's great, I'm all about sharing. Um, until recently I ran the, the Wikimedia Foundation grant program that funded many of these events, including this one. Um, Not this one. <laughs> this one, not that one. <laughs> yeah, um, and, uh, and yes, uh, thank you for the uh, well-directed question. Um, it is easier, in fact, to get funding for a focused meeting of the sort you envision, where at the end of it you deliver uh, a sustained piece of labor in the form of a document, a website, a series of, of learning tools, documentation for these very essential under-known and under-utilized tools, for example, uh, which, as you say, kind of doesn't write itself. Uh, so I encourage you to take initiative, uh, you all, and uh, design that sort of meeting. Uh, this sort of meeting, which is more of a miscellany, more of a meeting of minds, and, and as you say, more showcasing of stuff that is happening, uh, has, has its place and has value as well. Uh, as you say, inspiration, learning about, about being exposed to tools and opportunities, and the informal connections, right? We get to know each other, we have a beer, uh, we, are, we feel more comfortable uh, approaching each other later online. Uh, there's no denying that social value as well. However, that social value is hard to put on reports. Not just hard for organizers as grantees to put on reports, but actually also hard for us as funders to put on reports, to, to justify why are we funding these gatherings. Uh, yes, the social value, yes, getting to know each other, that's a given. But what else, you know, what else did this conference achieve? Uh, and being able to point at concrete results, results you can, you can touch, uh, or, or you, know, you can say, this tool is now documented, and therefore we can show that there is 2,000% more usage of this tool you know, with this documentation. That's what I mean by a palpable uh, result. It, it, would, it would certainly help. And I'm, I'm openly saying that we struggle at the foundation. Uh, I know from the outside 
the foundation looks uh, fairly uh, monolithic. It's the foundation. Uh, but there is, in fact, a lot of disagreement within the foundation and a lot of tension between uh, the desire to be more methodic and uh, more uh, show those graphs quarter over quarter. Here's a line that is trending upwards. Looks good. Versus the recognition that some things take more than 90 days, as, as Lean said, right? Some, some things take a longer time to incubate. We're talking about three-year relationships with some cultural institutions. We're talking about the need to, to build a sustained relationship, to build trust, to develop tools. Some of these things will only show fruit after a year or a year and a half. We have examples of this, right, of, of infrastructural investment and mentorship and all kinds of support that we have extended that was only measurable more than a year later. So like I say, that's in tension with uh, the foundation's own attempt to be uh, more systematic and more data-driven. The problem is not everything is easily translated into quarterly data. So I guess my message is uh, we need to do both. Right? We need to have uh, uh, awareness of the squishier parts of, of the value of these events of the less measurable parts, but also be disciplined and try to produce concrete results, document what we do. Um, we've run out of time. <laughs> Two final sentences. Um, Alex, who is also at the, at the meeting on behalf of Amical, is next presenter anyway. One of our outcomes was clone Alex, um, <laughs> as he's able to apparently simultaneously run hundreds of GLAM programs. Uh, so we all want to know what he does. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, with, with that kind of introduction, <laughs> it's over to you, Alex. Okay, maybe in a